Ho, ho, ho. Merry almost Christmas from Cuenca, Ecuador. Okay, I've got a few topics I want to cover today. <clears throat> One is a follow-up to the video about robbed uh, when Sandy had her cell phone ripped off and she came running home in a panic and shaking like crazy. One of our subscribers, his name is Steven, Steven Silveri, he sent me an email and he wanted to know about the details a, a little bit and wanted to know what, what's it cost for a cell phone in, in uh, in Cuenca and so I told him for a you know mid-range Samsung they have versions here A3, J2, J5, J7 that actually they're not for sale in the United States you only find them in countries like India and here and um, <clears throat> those are the most affordable so they're not thousand dollar cell phones but so he asked about uh, you know a cell phone and I told him uh, you know approximately and he sent the money to cover that and actually a little bit more so uh, uh, money that I could put towards her plan and a, a cell phone case it was extremely generous and I'm going to show a clip here of me surprising Sandy with that cell phone Yeah, this is for the tree. Check it out. You want to do a video? Yeah, for the Christmas. Uh, this? For dollars? Uh huh. For it, it plays annoying music, so you have to turn the music off. And this plugs into mm -hmm. this one. Ah, but this is not that. There's more things for Christmas <laughs> for the tree. Wow. What is that? Jerry's tree. Oh, that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is for me. Yeah. That's for you. It's for me? Yeah. Why? You're an <laughs> elf. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. Christmas. Oh, how cool. That you have to find where to put it on the tree. Okay. You have to find where to put it on the tree. It's wow. <laughs> how you find Thank you. Somebody was generous. See? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah say thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> See? Yeah. Serious? Yeah, and there's uh, something else. It's even more important. Where is it? There. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the most important part. Yeah. Why not Hello Kitty? Oh my god. Not Kitty. Now, I considered waiting for Christmas to give it to her as a surprise, as a present from a viewer, um, Stephen, Stephen Silveri, again, thank you. But here's why a cell phone is critical for her. It's, it's not just a matter of having it so that she can, you know, talk to people on Facebook. It, it's not just a social thing. It's critical for her because of the situation. As many of you know, Adriana has a son, Martin. He just turned seven. He has a very busy life. He goes to school in the morning. Uh, as a matter of fact, they get up at 5 a.m. so that he can get on the bus at 6 a.m. Now, the buses here are not um, universal buses or government buses or school uh, buses. The, the buses are private business, and so you have to pay for that transportation. Uh, you have to pay for a lot of things. School age children can be very expensive because you pay for everything. So six o'clock he's on the bus and then about 12 or 12.30 uh, he's released and gets on a bus 
and goes to wherever. Usually it'll be here at the house where Sandy will be here to meet him, uh, make, give him lunch, and then she gets in a taxi with him and they go to the sports complex where he has signed up for swimming. And you sign up for a year for whatever uh, program. So he's in swimming. After swimming, um, about an hour, yeah, it begins at two and then at three o'clock, he walks over to the other side of the sports complex and he's in the chess club. Now she will usually come home and do some chores around the house and prepare some things and have dinner ready when he comes and then he's got to shower and be in bed by uh, seven o'clock. Sandy takes care of those things. That's what she's doing here. She, she works. She does the cultural guide. She works for a dentist part-time and she takes care of those things because Adriana's, Adriana's life has changed uh, significantly and I will be doing a video on that in the foundation, but I have to wait a little bit and then I'll get that out, but I think you'll find it fascinating. So, and, and Sandy also has a daughter who's four years old and there's a preschool a few blocks from this house and she's in that preschool. The phone is critical because things are dynamic. Things are always changing. Oh, by the way, there won't be a chess club class today or swimming is, is not going to happen. She needs the cell phone to keep in touch so, so children aren't left stranded at the curb waiting for somebody to show up that never got the information. So this was critical. And uh, I wanted to buy her a cell phone, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. I didn't have any extra money to get her a cell phone and it wasn't anything I can consider until probably January. And so it was kind of, uh, we're scratching our head trying to think how is this going to work out? The contacts could come to me except people, the way they normally speak in Spanish is going to be rather rapid. Um, it'll be in voices I'm not familiar with and I'll catch some of it, but there's a good chance I'll get it wrong. And so it was, it was very problematic. And this guy, in a wonderful, generous spirit, um, contributed and it wholly paid for that cell phone. So she's got a decent cell phone and, um, and life goes on and she is amazingly happy. Not only did she come home panicked and fearful and uh, she is a fairly innocent, naive kind of person. And this had great effect on her. And she said that she'd been robbed five times before. The reason it was shocking to her is she had heard like many people uh, when she was in Quito that Cuenca is, is a totally safe place. I don't think you can have a city of over a half a million people and have that be true, uh, particularly with holidays coming up. But one o'clock in the afternoon on the corner of Don Bosco and Loja, which is a major intersection of nice areas and, and try to be accosted by two men who have the drug in their hand that basically turns you into a compliant zombie. Uh, it was just a, a place and an event that she never expected and it, it really devastated her. And then on top of that, how am I going to take care of these kids without a cell phone? What am I going to do? And uh, it was it was a serious, it was a serious thing. And because he stepped forward and helped out, her, the bounces back in her step. She is smiling. She wakes up happy again and it, it won't erase what happened, but it's completely changed it because the kindness that she experienced from that uh, really, really makes up a lot of ground that was lost in that event. So one last time again, I, I just thank you so much.
It has maybe now you understand um, the extent of the effect that that had. Okay, now here is the, the main topic of this video and I want to read you a note that I got. Charlie V, he says, listen, oh, let me back up. This is on the video of Fier Libre and he watched me walk through the market and in one case did not buy avocados because they were charging a dollar fifty when I can buy them next to my house for a dollar. And he also saw me walk by the shrimp where I declined to buy for four dollars shrimp and walked on to another vendor and then purchased shrimp there. So based on that he's made some judgments. So from Charlie B, listen man, you the typical cheapskate gringo who moves to South America thinking you can get everything for pennies. Life is cheap already and you bargain the prices? Get a grip on reality, dude. Move back to America and see if you can live off your social security pension. Very annoying video. By the way, I'm in Cuenca. Um, doesn't surprise me that you're in Cuenca. It's kind of a typical attitude of half of the gringos that live in Cuenca, which are wholly obnoxious, uh, holier than thou, uh, judgmental uh, people that I cannot stand. 10% or 5% of the people you'll run into the United States are like that. For some reason, they flock here in droves. Now, did this really bother me? Not really. I get it all the time. I have blocked him uh, because I just don't need those kind of negative comments. If it were a valid comment, if he was asking me um, the reason I did something rather than assuming that I'm some kind of cheapskate and I don't know where he gets the idea that I'm on Social Security. Um, I'm not 65 and I never said I was on Social Security so I don't know where, where that's coming from. However, he entirely missed the point because he jumped to some conclusion, you know, based on what he thinks in his head, and he completely missed the point. I did not bargain on the avocados. I simply asked the price, and the price was higher than it should have been. When you go to Fiera Libre or some of the markets, or all the markets, there's no price tags, and you're going to get charged whatever they think they can get away with. And it bothers me that just because I'm a gringo, that some vendors, not that many, maybe 10, 15% of them, will charge more than um, everybody else is charging. And when I run into a vendor like that, I don't buy from them. I, I don't appreciate it, especially when I see somebody else come along two minutes later and they sell those same things for 75 cents. It had nothing to do with the extra 50 cents. It could have been a thousand dollars. It had to do with the fact that they're scammers and I don't trust scammers, particularly when you go to the market, all the time you run into this issue where they pick the worst fruit and sneak it into your bag and then you go home and you gotta throw away a good proportion of what you bought. That's hardly a bargain if you're just throwing it away. I don't go there for bargains. Most of my shopping takes place at Super Maxi where I pay too much for things. It's not about the dollar amount. I'm not going to reward somebody for being a scammer. In that case, it was too much. I know what prices are and it was too much. So I didn't buy it. Now as for the shrimp, yeah, I turned down the $4 one. I didn't like the looks of those shrimp. And there was some fish by that same vendor that had foggy eyes. It was, it was older fish. I didn't trust that vendor. So I didn't walk away because it was $4. $4 for a pound of shrimp is pretty good, right? I walked away because I wasn't going to buy from that vendor. I walked down, and if the guy understood any Spanish, uh, he might know this, but he's one of those gringos that judges, but really doesn't know anything about the culture anyway. Hey, if you can jump to conclusions, so can I. I walked down to a vendor uh, a little ways further down and I ended up buying shrimp from her for $5.80. So I paid $1.80 more a pound to buy from her. It has nothing to do with being a cheapskate. 
If you knew anything, Charlie V, you would know that, but obviously you don't know anything. You're probably new. And I wanted to bring up uh, a little phenomenon that goes here. It, all the time people are concerned with cost of living. I've done a few videos on it. And I just want to explain something. When you first come here, you're going to be honeymoon time. You're going to have the rose-colored glasses. So your first few weeks, first few months, it's probably six months to a year before you start to really understand the scope of what cost of living really is. It takes a while. It's not a direct comparison. If you're buying bananas, it's 25% of the price you're going to pay in the United States. If you're buying a cappuccino machine, you're going to pay 400% of the price in the United States. And there's a lot of products in between. So when people get here, they'll go to the Mercados because it's a great tourist thing. And you go and you see, look, I bought this watermelon. It was only a dollar. I bought this huge pineapple. It's only 75 cents. I bought this fruit. And it's true. Now, there's issues that you have to contend with. There's a lot of pesticide use. There's a lot of parasitic problems because they use gray water or sewage water. Uh, and so you don't want to get parasites. You've got to scrub the stuff. Uh, it, so there's, there's issues, but it's okay. You learn ways around it. It's a different culture. There's different ways of doing things. So it's not a slam on the culture. It's simply reality. And so they think, Oh my God, look at this, the prices, they're amazing. But then you decide one day that you want to get a navel orange, an eating orange, not just a juice orange. Well, they don't really have those here. They're imported from the United States and they're gonna cost a fortune. Uh, there are so many items. Uh, another example, I love maple syrup. I don't really care for uh, Aunt Jemima or McCormick, the, you know, the fake syrup with flavoring. I love maple syrup. So here you can buy maple syrup in Super Maxi. And you'll get a little bottle like this that's good for three or four servings, not heavy servings. So it's not much, it goes pretty quick. And it's $10. Now in the United States, you can buy double that amount for half the money, for $5, you can get a quantity twice the size of that. Most of them are actually bigger than that, and they'll charge seven, eight dollars, but you know, quantity per dollar is what I'm talking about. So I don't eat much maple syrup. It, it's, a, it's a rare thing, because if you ignore prices completely, then you're either rich or you're stupid, because I, I don't know about everybody else, I live on a budget. Some days I got lots of extra money to spend. Other days, I'm pinching my pennies because, you know, I've got a bill coming up or something. You know, it, life isn't that different. And just to give you an idea, people will come from, let's just pick San Francisco. And they'll say, oh my God, everything is cheaper here. Or overall, it's so much cheaper here. Because rent is a third of what it is in San Francisco and, and like that. And I understand that. And... For them, it's true. But I came from upstate New York, and I can live in upstate New York at least as good as here in Cuenca. Most of the country of the United States, for what you spend in Cuenca to live a typical normal life, you can spend that or less in the United States. So here's my bottom line. I'm not saying Cuenca is crazy or whatever. It, it's, it's an expensive city for Ecuador. And if you like things beyond just eating fruits and vegetables all day, and maybe, you know, once in a while you want to have something beyond that, uh, I don't want this to be a price list. So you're going to have to take my word for it and go through and, and compare a lot of prices to see what I'm talking about. Rent's cheaper? Yes, it is. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things that are cheaper, but there's a lot of things that are a lot more expensive. And so you have to kind of figure over the course of time, what is it you're spending? And when you find yourself spending $1,500 or $2,000 a month and you realize that in upstate New York, for example, or near Raleigh-Durham, North Carolina, 
you can also live a pretty good life on 1500 to 2000 dollars a month my video was not demonstrating and i made no comment as such that this is how you are cheap and you whiz, weasel and how you take advantage of people my video mentioned a couple things about not being taken advantage of and you, there's no obligation uh, to buy avocados from this particular vendor because Charlie V thinks you should. There's 20 different vendors and you might not want to buy from the first one. Maybe those are a little harder than you want. Maybe these are way too soft. Maybe you're just going to find the ones that seem to fit you and you're going to ask and if it's the honest price then you're going to buy them. I mean what the hell is wrong with that? And why would that upset Charlie V to the point to, you know, send off a nasty gram? So, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Everything you have to put in perspective. Is it cheap here? It depends. Where did you come from? If you were living in New York City, if you're living in San Francisco, if you were living in Chicago, it's probably cheaper here. Uh, it could be half the price of living there. Uh, anywhere in California is probably going to be way more expensive than here and, and so you come here and you're going to save money. On the other hand, if you're coming here for the cost of living, I think it's a big mistake. You need to come here for here, reasons here, not because of the cost of living because who knows what that cost of living is going to be two years from now. So it, it, I didn't come here for the cost of living and I'm far from cheap. I sit on a couch and chair bought from the most expensive furniture company in Ecuador, Colonial. Uh, my TV, as far as, I, I'm not cheap. I probably should be because I waste too much money. If you're going for cost of living, you probably want to look elsewhere. Now, I recommend, highly recommend Colombia. You can live there for about 40% of the cost of living in Cuenca, Ecuador. And there's a lot of advantage to living there. And I love it there. And just to give you a quick preview uh, of an upcoming video, I am most likely going to be going back to Colombia in January. I'm trying to get that to work out. But even more than that, my future plan is actually to live part of the year in Colombia and the other part here in Cuenca. I absolutely love Colombia. There's things I'm not finished here in Cuenca. There's things I really like about here. But I'm not blinded by things about Cuenca. I'm not, I don't have some blind allegiance. I do these videos to give you a picture of reality. Is it reality that you're going to have a market full of hundreds and hundreds of independent vendors and you're going to stumble into a few that are slimy operators? Uh, yeah. You know, it's simply the odds. Is it because it's Cuenca, Ecuador? No, it's because that's life. That's what happens. If you want to give patronage to somebody who is dishonest, go for it. But if I go and I see a vendor and they're, they're thumbing the scale or they're cheating in some way, I had one do a weight on some fruit and then slipped one of the fruit out of the bag when they handed it to me when I happened to catch it. I'm not going to do business with somebody like that. It doesn't make me a cheapskate. It, it makes me a human being that doesn't want to be taken advantage of. You know you're cool.